Like, because it was such a scam, because you could basically pass and do really well, because it's all like, it's all like, um, based on coursework, right? So all you have to really do is like, there's a couple of class tests, so basically before the class test, you like, you study like, you know, before you write and you study like an entire paragraph and you just write it out in the test or whatever. And, but in like, but like a lot of it was based on coursework, and so your coursework's basically like, oh, go home, practice writing, and then write about how you've improved. And or practice speaking and write about how you've improved. So you basically go home, use a book to do all your work, and then write like, oh, I've improved my writing skills and yada yada yada, and all of this nonsense. And and, it, and you get really good marks. But then when it came to my exam, it was a little bit of a disaster. And I remember they were like, hey, so what what does your dad do as a job? I was like, oh crap, I don't know any jobs in Spanish. So I was like, he's a student. And they started laughing. I was like, well, yeah, well, I have to come up with something. And so then they were like, but they weren't having any of it. So they were like, what does your mum do? I was like, hmm, crap. I was like, she is mi madre e un bombero, <laughs> which is the only word I could come up with, which is the masculine version of fireman. <laughs> and, and my examiners laughed. I don't think anyone's ever laughed in a Spanish speaking exam before, like the, the examiners, but they laughed. I just couldn't think of any jobs, man. It was difficult. It was really difficult. Man. <sighs> Anyways, that's my story of uh, <laughs> introductory Spanish. That was like four years ago now, though, so I mean, it's pretty fair to say that I've forgotten a lot of it. What? It didn't get any better than I did, I did physics. <laughs> Alright guys, we're somehow three and a half minutes in game, we haven't introduced our players. So, in the upper left hand corner of the map, we have our red Terran player, who has been making waves so far, taking down Denver in a TVZ just before. It's Muyuk, our red Terran player. In the upper left corner of Echo. Down to the bottom right, it is the one and only Namshar, the Swedish Zerg from Connor G Sports, also part of Team WoW team which was uh, founded at the Dutch StarCraft League this past weekend, which was where Namshaw, uh, which Namshaw did take part in of course and did pretty well, made it to the semi-finals before being taken down by Rhett. Who's the guy that beat Boom Boom in the bracket? Um, Froz is a um, player from Croatia. Croatia? Is it Croatia? I can't remember where it is. No. Is it? I think it is. I'm gonna have to check now before while, while, while we um, have this um, review running around. <clears throat> Just want to double check. Of course, you can't actually check <sighs> on the bracket. Yeah, he is from Croatia. I was right. Yeah, he's a Croatian player. He's uh, plays for Team MIA, Team Missing in Action, and um, big mistake losing that Reaper. He's a Croatian player, and um, I guess you know TVZ. He has a couple of tricky TVZ builds to deal with, and. When there's a uh, you know latency involved as well, I'm sure there's um, probably wasn't a too favourable matchup for um, Boom Boom in the end. So um, early on here, we haven't really talked about much Starcraft, but um, it was just a single Reaper expansion. He lost that Reaper, and he's now going into some Hellions. Um, he's got four Marines out on the map, and uh, he's just starting to wall off at the front. His natural expansion on the way up. Starport's about halfway done as well. And he's once again going to be going into this Hellion drop kind of build, so something a little bit different, something a little bit sneaky, a little bit more aggressive than usual. What we just saw Muse against Denver, basically, in that game we caught of him in the round of 16. So Namshaw going to have to be on his toes here playing against this guy, going to have to be ready for the potential aggression which will be coming in. And we'll see if he is going to be ready for that here in a few um, moments of time. So... Couple of Hellions moving across the map and uh, looking to maybe get some damage done, but instead just get turned away by this queen. That's actually a lot of Hellion uh, damage on that first Hellion there. Um, stop, has it made a medevac? Has it made anything? No. Oh, it's actually just going to go into a Viking. Okay, so actually a little bit different from what he was doing in that game we saw of him previously. Um, but with the Viking on the way out, he can still follow up with a medevac if you would like and um, get something done. He's uh, currently saving his Hellions just on his own side of the map. We'll group up with them now, and he will continue making Hellions past six. So, again, the potential to really be aggressive with these throughout the game. Namshaw with double evolution chamber on the way up. 
So he's looking to look to get into his upgrades nice and quickly here again. And you've got to remember, this is a Terran build which is not involved in a fast third command center. So generally, he will, he will be wanting to force some more units than usual. He'll be wanting to do a bit more damage than usual. Because if he doesn't, he's going to be a little bit further behind than you would expect a Terran to be had they just gone for a 3cc build. Because he's committing to these extra units a little bit early on. So we are expecting to see some damage coming out of the Terran player here at some point. But he's losing Hellions. And again, that's not great when you're kind of massing them up and hoping to attack with them sometime soon. And um, Viking is going to find that Overlord if he's paying attention, but he flies past it. And he hasn't found an Overlord just yet. One Marine turned an Overlord away from the main base. Third Command Center only just now on the way down. So Namshaw will know he has to be a little bit careful here. But he's a bit supply blocked, which will slow him down a little bit. He's adding on some Banelings, so he's going to be prepared pretty nicely against potential uh, Hellbat attacks. So, um, again, he's just preparing for everything right now, especially because he's seen uh, how late this third CC is. Medivac just loads up with a bunch of Marines, and I imagine it's going to be a combination of a drop into the natural slash main to distract and these Hellions running into the third base to really try and get some damage done. 16 Maulings on the way for Namshaw to try and help clean this up. As we actually have some SCVs coming across the map as well. Do we have an armory? No, we don't. So, really weird to see his SCVs. Oh, okay, so he's actually just in the middle of repairing the Hellions. And the Hellions ran away before the SCVs were done, so that's why these uh, SCVs are coming across the map here. Gonna try and get some damage done, but the first Bailing actually connects here, and Namshaw are gonna surround this pretty nicely. At the same time, the drop is in the natural. This is pretty much dealt with over here at the third, and we do have Queens, one of them going down, but the rest of the two are gonna be able to slowly but surely pick away at this uh, medevac, and it is gonna go down here. Stim finishes up, but all these units are gonna go down, and Muyuk gets completely cleaned up here. Good play by Namshaw. Really, really, uh... Solid play there, solid defense, not letting anything through, and he takes a significant worker lead from this point. 20 workers up, and more workers on the way in that production tab. 1-1 one, one on the way as well, so he's going to be in an upgrade lead, something you don't see the Zerg player have all too often in this matchup. And uh, this Viking just moving around, and still hasn't found this one Overlord here. The one Overlord which is actually out on the map right now is the one Overlord he's just not been able to find. And surely, now he sees it again, surely, hey! The Viking picks up on it, and he's finally going to be able to work his way. How many kills this Viking got? Just one. It's been kind of the loneliest Viking ever. Four more Hellions coming across the map, but I mean, they're pretty late. They're not really going to achieve all too much here. They might try and grab a queen, but Lings are going to be here in plenty of time. And with Creep as well, they're going to try and for that surround. He grabs all three. Well, not all three, but he grabs three of four uh, Hellions there. And this final Hellion is going to be in a little bit of trouble. You can just see this Lings slowly surrounding it, and then he's going to stop. Surround and goodbye. And Muyuk is going to be forced to lift his uh, CC at the third base here. So goodbye, third CC. Well, not goodbye, but, you know, he's going to have to lift this up. Well, he's, he's still in Marines, and I still think he has to lift this up. He has to lift this up. He's on fire. Rings are going to run away. He needs to get uh, some SCVs over here ASAP. And there they are on their way over to repair this. But there's a lot of lings coming across the map. And Namshaw might just wolf, wolf in some bands. Might try and just get some game and down. You know what? If he comes in right now and commits onto that CC, there's only a few SCVs there. He has to lift once again. The SCVs will go down. The S uh, CC will remain on fire. More Marines having to be lifted up. And will he get the wall up in time? Yes, he will. So the wall is up. SCVs are going to be killed off once again over here. At least now the CC is not on fire. So many Zergans from Namshaw. And you can just keep spamming them out on 67 workers. He's pretty much at that place he wants to be at for the rest of of this game. So, great position here for Namshaw now as he still has a Zergling here denying that CC from landing. There we go, and at 12 and a half minutes, this is a very late time to land your third. As Namshaw just adds on another 10 or so workers, goes up to 78 workers now in this game. 2-2 two, two over halfway done. He's going to have 2-2 two, two against 1-1 one, one here. So this is again a long time in which Namshaw has the potential to really abuse these upgrades. He's going to take a lot of fights in this game where he's going to be at the upgrade advantage. That's not usually the way it works. It's just the Terran player who has them timing windows where with the upgrade advantage. Some mutas on the way out. Some Banans being moved in. I think Namshaw is going to be more than prepared to deal with this incoming attack. It's going to be a slight upgrade lead for him right now. 1-1 one, one against just 1-0 uh, oh, as the Banans solid crash falls here. A couple of mines do borrow. This is going to be a big Mine share hits onto a lot of these Zerglings. There's enough Balins continuing to stream in to clean up pretty much the rest of this. That last Marine here, nice by Namshaw. Pulls the Balins away and allows just the Zerglings to clean that up. Not wasting Balins for no reason at all. And that. Is that just going to be GG? And I don't really blame him. You might think, oh, it's a little bit premature. Oh, why is he Namshaw? And Muyuk. I know we're currently watching middle of nowhere. There we go. This is an 11 racks, 11 gas opening from Muyuk, so the potential to go for a few extra Reapers than usual, especially compared to that last game where he just opened for one. He's the red town player to the top left. Muyuk. 
down to the bottom right, our Blue Zerg player from Colony G Sports. Let's hear it if you're cheering for Namsha. Down to the bottom right. Up a game right now in this best of three. And what an opening he's picked here. Bull first against what will be a slightly earlier Reaper. Means that he's going to have that queen and a couple of lings out nice and quickly to be able to, um... <coughs> to be able to, um... What am I trying to say? To be able to um, deal with the incoming Reaper, I guess. Why do I keep casting Namshaw games? It's the first Namshaw game I cast all day! And it's the best of three, we're not just going to leave after one game, are we? It's like the first time we cast Namshaw all day, it's the first series that came available in the round of eight. So I don't know, I just, I just did what I thought was best. Anyways, guys, um, welcome back to the stream again. Um, we, we, I ran, I break, ran slightly into the start of this game, but um, TVZ. What really happens at the start of a TVZ? Not much. This is where the real action is at when this Reaper comes in and gets turned around immediately by the Queen because it was a pull first. Okay, a little bit anticlimactic. Someone wants the playlist in the chat. I'll give you guys the link because I'm nice like that. I'm feeling nice today. Second Reaper joins up here, and there's that third Reaper as well. I mean, this is kind of what you're expecting to see from an 11 Rax, 11 Gas. This used to be really um, something people would do a lot, this um, free Reaper opening, but it really kind of has gone out of fashion once again. Um, you know, players started to realize that they just couldn't get the damage done that they wanted to with it, and that it wasn't really worthwhile. Um, it's kind of nice for continuing your opponent for a while and stuff, but Zerg's figured ways to deal with it. Um, you know, like, two base Mudo was very effective against it as well, so... It fell out of the metagame a lot, and, um, well, it fell out of the metagame, and um, from there, we ended up with um, what we have now, which is just the kind of standard 2 Reaper, or even sometimes the 1 Reaper opening as well, always a possibility in the matchup. 3 Reaper's definitely a little bit weird nowadays, and a very standard game for Muyuk here, as he goes into um, a fast third CC. In his main base, just watching these two Zergans which have snuck around the side of the map here. Didn't get there in time to delay the natural, but have forced the Reapers to turn back around and will be uh, having to clean up these uh, two Zerglings. So this is nice from Namshaw, I mean, it buys him a little bit more time where these Reapers aren't on the other side of the map, uh, cleaning up, uh, you know, doing damage, killing off drones, picking off the health of the Queens, gives an opportunity to move a drone over towards his third base here, get some more creep tumors out onto the map. So this is really nice from Namshaw actually, buying that little bit of extra time. It's, um, it's quite nice, um, them two links doing a lot more than you might initially think. Three of us going to be uh, poking up this ramp here and uh, uh, thinking about what they want to do. They're just going to trade a little bit of hit points with this queen. I mean, that's pretty standard. I mean, with these three reapers, your real goal is, again, to slow your opponent down. You know, if you can do damage to the queens, perfect. Because with three reapers, you can generally slowly work away against the health of the queens. And once the hellions come in, really try and pick a couple of those queens off. Double evolution chamber comes down here from Namsha. And, um, well... <clears throat> We've got uh, four Hellions now on the map, two more on the way. Again, this was just 3cc, and it's a very standard build this time around from Muyuk, who adds on a couple of extra racks. Now, interested to see if he does go past six Hellions, because he's, he's definitely been a fan of that in previous games. So let's see if he goes past six Hellions this time around, as uh, Hellions moving forward here. Can try and grab a couple of creep tumors, but uh, with three Queens in the front, and with Transfusers available on them, I don't think he's really going to be able to get too much damage done. Now, um, he'll loop around and maybe get some damage onto the third base, but again, he's really kind of unrealistic to expect him to actually, you know, kill anything or do anything significant with this. Queen's coming into position, turns that away, and starts pushing his creep out from this third base as well. So the creep spread looking good for Namshaw here early on. These Hellions not really denying any early tumors or anything. And there's two more Hellions coming across the map. What's it going to be? He is going to keep on building Hellions here. So again, big commitment to Hellions early on. Double engineering bay on the way, though, so I mean... It's not really like, I mean, it's kind of weird because he's just kind of building more Hellions than you'd usually expect to see. Is that a reactor and, uh, is that double reactor? Okay, sorry, yeah, of course it is. That, now that makes sense because, um, let's just wait a moment or two here. We have Transducers coming up from the Queens of these Hellions, a lot of them moving forwards. And there's not that many Zergans out, honestly, from Namshaw, so the potential to get quite a bit of damage done right now with these Hellions. They're going to try to do whatever they can. Some links come in behind, but they get us around and get turned away pretty quickly. The Hellions are roasting them up there. And Scan will slowly start to push some of this creep back. 
As uh, the Koreans coming forwards, and there's one more chance for use. There will be in five seconds, so not much more these Hellions can do right now. Good defense from Namshar, doesn't lose much here. And again, Muya committing to a lot of these Hellions, so this is kind of expensive. It slows down, you know, the speed at which he could, uh, you know, add extra barracks, etc. Because it's a lot of, you know, Hellions are very mineral expensive. Now he lifts up. The reason I was confused about these two barracks was because uh, usually you'd land one barracks on here, and you would actually wouldn't generally build a, a reactor on a barracks. You'd build the reactor on the uh, factory as the barracks is building so that you can then swap it over immediately. So I was a little bit confused as the couple of reactors, uh, reactors came up there. But, um, but yeah. These um, lings are in a little bit of uh, trouble, getting roasted up a little bit here. And the Hellions are just uh, back in away for now. Creep continue to be pushed out onto the map. Here, there and everywhere. Actually, I mean, again, the creeps was very good here. I mean, one scan came down from Muyuk, but he only really cleaned up one, two tumors, and of course, with so many queens on the field, uh, it's very easy to replace those, so we've seen the creep continue to be very good from him here. Namsha has to be on his toes, though, again, a Hellion run by like this to the left-hand side can very quickly clean out his third base, although it would be very expensive to kill off, what, like 10 to 12 drones here? If he loses all these Hellions, it's going to be very, very expensive for him. And Leng is already starting to split up here, come into position, and they're going to come and run in towards these Hellions, which are going to back themselves into a bit of a corner here, honestly. And they're going to start taking a lot of damage, and the Binglings are going to connect. Namshaw cleans it up with no worries at all. And again, he sits in this position where he's 20 workers up, he's ahead in upgrades, not as much as he was in that last game, but still slightly ahead in the upgrades, as three Reapers here will get cleaned up as well. And all of a sudden, Muyuk loses all of his map control. He is moving across the map with some Marines. Stim finished in uh, combat shields on the way. 1-1 about finished. It's a nice timing. He really has to do something with this. He really has to push back, honestly, some of this creep spread. Because if it goes untouched for a little bit longer here, he's really going to be uh, struggling later in this game to push across the map without just being surrounded and kind of swarmed over by the Zerg. Nice counterattack by Namshaw coming along the right-hand side of the map here. However, he has got a drop in towards the main base to deal with and this attack coming towards the front. He's got Ling and Bane at the third base, so he's well prepared over here. And this um, counterattack is going to come in. A few SCVs killed, not too many at this third base. But again, he has to deal with this uh, drop right now, which is actually only dropped off one Marine. At the same time, Namshaw pushes back the attack in the middle of the map. Those uh, Lings are going to force that lift at the third. And finally, this queen is going to. Uh, finally, this medevac is going to unload the rest of its cargo. This queen will end up going down a little bit, unfortunately. Things rolling in though, and we'll be able to clean up the rest of this. As uh, these zerglings, oh no, a little bit of a shame there. Namshaw losing them zerglings when he really didn't need to, and uh, Muyuk cleans that up. So that's actually quite nice for Muyuk. That's a lot of uh, zerglings he kills off there, um, despite being uh, having his third to light a little bit longer. It's still kind of nice. I'm surprised he's actually not making more SCVs. He's actually very low on SCVs. He's uh, slightly above optimal saturation uh, in the main base, considering he could uh, send them down to his natural. His economy is actually going to be a little bit crappy, honestly, um, considering the time in the game. Pushing through the middle of the map here. Namshaw sits 30 workers up right now. He just has to really push back this fight, and he's going to be in a pretty nice position. His mine's not burrowing just yet. There we go, burrowing once again here. Very clumped up, though, as these first three buildings are going to come forwards, and boom, boom. Three, uh, two of the four mines taken down here. Another mine available will get taken down very quickly in the splits. Not the best right now out of Muyuk, and he's going to get start getting cleaned up. The Muyuk's come in. They snipe off one more Widow Mine there. Namshaw with a lot more lings on the way should have enough to turn this around. Before the next uh, attack comes in, he will have a few more Bailings onto the map. And, um, <clears throat> well, a few Marines moving forward. See, this uh, Widow Mine is um, kind of struggling to find out where it wants to go. It looks as though he's trying to lift up and load up. And he's actually going to what boost him towards the main base, which is a little bit of an interesting way to go about things. So, oh, he's going to stop here. He's going to stop in the field, kind of in the low, kind of on the edge of the main, and off the. Third. And um, he's going to unload here. He's losing so many medevacs. He's going to lose everything. And that's actually going to be GG there, guys. Sorry, I uh, 